naming and writing formulas with covalent molecules is a little bit different than ionic. So before with ionic, when we said a compound like over here, Al2O3, we would just say aluminum oxide. We did not have to worry about the subscripts, the two and the three. We would just say aluminum for your cation, oxide for your anion, and that was it. However, in covalent bonding the molecules, we have to actually use prefixes for every single subscript we use. You will always have a Greek prefix unless your first element in your, in your molecule only has one atom. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So when we're naming or writing a formula, usually the nonmetal furthest to the left in the periodic table is written first. However, there are many exceptions. We are still going to add IDE at the end of our second element. So we don't lose that, but we're going to be adding some prefixes. So here are some prefixes we'll be using. Mono all the way to deca. And we'll use those to tell us to describe the subscript when we're naming and writing formulas for covalent molecules. So for example, we have nitrogen and oxygen. In covalent, we have to actually name the subscripts we have. For NO2, we would say nitrogen dioxide. The only time we will never have a prefix is if our first element in our compound or our molecule only has one atom. If there's only one atom of our first element, we will not use a prefix. That is the only time. But here, N204, that's dinitrogen tetraoxide. We have to label and say how many of each atom we have. We have to actually say the prefixes in our name for covalent bonding. So for some examples here, if you want to give these a shot, the first one we would have would be sulfur trioxide. Then we would have dinitrogen monosulfide. So again, we use mono only on the second element. If our first element has one atom, we just say that it's sulfur. We don't say mono. But we will use mono on the second element. Our last one, it's diphosphorus and then tetrabromide. So again, kiddos, when we have covalent bonding, those molecules, we have to, to label or kind of explain each of these subscripts in our name. It's a little bit different than ionic, a little more, more detail. When we write formulas, though, for covalent molecules, it's a lot easier. With covalent, because there's no ions, there's no charges. So all we have to do when we write formulas for covalent is just write how the name sounds. Carbon monoxide, well, we have one carbon, one oxygen, CO. Carbon dioxide, well, we have one carbon, and we have two oxygens. Dinitrogen trisulfide, we have two nitrogens and three sulfurs. Diphosphorus hexabromide, we have two phosphorus and six bromines. So again, when we write formulas for covalent, there is no balancing charges. You just write the formula how it sounds. When we're naming, again, we have to describe how many atoms we have of each in our formula. We still use IDE at the end of the second element.